Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to be back here at uh, FICI, and it's wonderful to be in conversation with uh, pretty much the who's who of the government of India, uh, secretaries who are looking after large chunks of uh, the sectors that move the economy. Without further ado, let me introduce you to the secretaries here uh, this evening before we get into the conversation. I'll start with my left, Ms. Rachna Shah, Secretary of the Textile Ministry. Thank you very, very much for being here with us. Mr. S. Krishnan, Secretary at METI. Mr. Krishnan, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, Mr. Ajay Sheth, uh, Secretary of the Economic Affairs at the Finance Ministry. Mr. Seth, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. And Mr. Sandeep Pondrick, the Secretary at the Ministry of Steel. Mr. Pondrick, many, many thanks for joining us. Uh, we are, of course, awaiting Mr. Rajesh Kumar Singh, the Secretary of the Defence Ministry, and he should be here shortly. Uh, it is almost the end of this calendar year, and as we kickstart uh, the next financial year as well as the next calendar year, it is time to take stock of the year that's gone by as well as understand what the government intends to prioritize for the new year. Uh, a lot has been spoken of in terms of measures that have been taken forward, measures that were unveiled in the budget. But more importantly, we are now dealing with a geopolitical mix, uh, which appears to be far more challenging than at the start of the year. There are many imponderables at the moment. We also have a change in the White House. And of course, uh, the expectations on what the Trump administration is likely to do by way of tariffs, uh, you know, what happens with the Fed, what happens with, uh, uh, with interest rates in the U.S., all of those will have implications and an impact as far as the global economy is concerned, including for us here in India. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, the Secretary of the Defense Ministry, Mr. Rajesh uh, uh, Singh, to the, join us on this panel as well. Thank you very much, sir, for being here uh, this evening. So without further ado, uh, let's kickstart the conversation with... Uh, taking stock with where we find ourselves as far as the economy is concerned. And I'll uh, give the Economic Affairs Secretary the first go. Mr. Seth, many, many thanks again. Let me start by asking you for your own assessment of the health and the strength of the Indian economy at this point in time. A, how concerned are you as far as inflation goes? And B, what is the outlook now as far as interest rates go, given the fact that inflation is still running at 6% above the RBI's uh, comfort level? Uh, what's the expectation that the government has on both inflation as well as interest rates. Your view? Actually, this is saying that after we are all here, the format has changed. <laughs> so instead of being a conversation or having a view on what Mr. Sa and Mrs. Vish had said it for us, as the format has changed, let me attempt uh, to the question which you have asked. Um, we started the year with estimates in the economic survey is 65 to 7% growth. And I see that we are still very much in that zone. And I don't see any significant uh, downside risk uh, coming to that. Uh, what I see that several of you have been talking about, informed people have been talking about, is an in apparent slowdown. Yes, the numbers in the second quarter does show that some of the products or some of the services uh, may not be at the same level where they were, say, about a year back or even in, say, two quarters earlier. But thereafter, if you look it at some other indicators, especially I'm looking at it in terms of the e-way bills or the e-invoices, especially in the month of October, they tell a different number. Uh, that does not indicate that we have any significant possibility of any downside risk from 65 to 7% growth, uh, uh, which has been... Uh, uh, estimated at the beginning of the year. Of course, it can be, well, this is going to be closer to six and a half, it will be closer to seven. That I would not like to venture into that. As far as inflation is concerned, yes, uh, food prices has been a problem area, and uh, that has been largely because of the extreme uh, continuing rainfall, unusually long when it has continued this year. But other than the food prices, uh, inflation is not a challenge. As far as interest rate in the economy is concerned, I would rather not get into that. That is a monetary policy action, which, with the full information, uh, the central bank will uh, take a view on that. Th thank, thank you for giving us uh, your view on inflation, interest rates, as well as the economy. And as you pointed out, you don't believe that there is a downside risk to the growth assessment that was put forward in the budget. But, uh, sir, if I may, uh, you know, ask you about where things stand as far as CapEx is concerned. And there was a slowdown, partly on account of the elections. But what's the sense that you get today in terms of undershooting on the CapEx targets that the government has set out? And more importantly, do you expect a significant pickup from here on? 
See, on that aspect, that last year, the capital expenditure by Government of India was uh, 9.5 lakh crore. This year, it was budgeted about 11.1. And uh, there may be some undershooting, but I do expect that will be a significant increase over last year. So while some sectors are a bit slow, but on the other hand, a uh, few other sectors, there are additional demands uh, coming up. So I don't see that as a... Uh, major issue coming up. Like early, even last year, it was busted for 10, expenditure was about 95%. So I see even this year also we should be around the same percentage points. Okay, so you you believe that you'll be able to make up for uh, what we have lost on account of the elections yeah. and so on and so forth. Uh, before I get the other secretaries in, one quick uh, clarification that we would like from you. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk about the fact that the government is likely to bring in approvals from the cabinet as far as ELI schemes are concerned. Now, are these separate from what was already announced in the budget? Uh, and do you believe that uh, this is something new that we're talking about? See, so you are aware that once the schemes gets announced, a new initiative gets announced, and then go to the process of a detailed formulation and then the appraisal, then they move to the cabinet, which mm. is the competent so authority for approval. These announced. are the ones, the yeah. five schemes which were announced as part of the PM package, and a uh, number of them are ready. And as far as uh, uh, internship scheme is there, that is already approved uh, at an appropriate right. level as a pilot scheme to be done this year. So these are the same schemes which are getting approved. Okay, uh, fair, fair enough. Thank you very much for that clarification but because there was confusion on whether there were some new schemes that the government was at this point in time looking at. Let me get the Secretary of Defense into the conversation. Mr. Singh, many thanks. Uh, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm as well as a lot of confidence expressed with the Defense Ministry's indigenization list. We've seen five of those as far as uh, the recent past is concerned. What should the expectation be uh, from here on, uh, sir? And if you can give us a status check of where things currently stand in terms of the kind of cost savings we've accrued uh, because of the import substitution done. Yeah, thank you uh, for that. Uh, happy to join you here today. Uh, well, uh, I would say that the defense industry in this country is at a, an inflection point. It's reached a kind of a critical mass where we now have significant volumes being produced indigenously. The, the value of production in this country has gone up by three times over the last uh, 10 years or so. Exports have gone up by 31 times. And uh, our focus increasingly has been on ensuring that we spend our capex within this country. The ratio we originally set out three years back was about 60% uh, to be spent within India, 40% uh, outside. The ratio for the current year has now been enhanced further to 75%. And we intend to double down on that indigenization uh, exercise that we are doing. In some ways, it's a painful process because uh, obviously, uh, it's, in some ways, it is easier to simply buy things abroad, uh, looking at the best, uh, you know, looking at the brochures, taking out the best set of capabilities that you want and try to get that. But in the long run, it detracts from your strategic autonomy. It detracts from your ability to uh, withstand supply chain shocks, which some of which we are actually facing today in the context of uh, some, of some of our systems. I mean, it's not a secret that the S-400, for example, is delayed. We've, had, we've got three batteries, two more are delayed because of the conflicts that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is a strong strategic case for going indigenous, and we intend to double down there. Our top priority will be on what we call IDDM, which is indigenously designed, manufactured, uh, manufactured, developed and manufactured. That will be the sort of strand of our procurement process, which we will focus on. And uh, some of these are in areas where DRDO has developed technologies in artillery. You'll probably see some uh, cases where uh, uh, DRDO technology private partners will come in and we'll be manufacturing uh, that equipment at scale. The C-295 model where uh, we have uh, Airbus coming in along with a private sector partner is another sort of fairly strong uh, uh, sort of template and we could probably do a few more of those. Mm -hmm. In time, the intention is to increasingly bring in the private sector. Right now, in the domestic uh, value that we produce, about 70% is by our 16 uh, public sector undertakings, uh, nine of which are new from the ordnance factories, corporatized. Others are the older ones. 
the intention is increasingly to make it about closer to 50-50, and I'm sure the private sector is going to step up in that direction. So yes, exciting times are ahead, and this is one sector where there will be a lot of expenditure happening, about 20 to $25 billion per year over the next 10 years. So certainly this is an area where if you're there in this play, you will get a lot of growth. Uh, Sir, I, I just want you to comment on a point that was made by Uday Kotak uh, in an interview with me a couple of days ago where he said that uh, in the new uh, era that we live in, uh, India must exercise its military power and hence we must spend much more as a percentage of our GDP on, on defence. Uh, do you believe that that is something that the government is considering at this point in time, significant allocation, higher allocation as far as defence is concerned, especially as you talk about the changing geopolitics as well. Well, I agree with some of what he said, uh, but uh, the point is that uh, what we have right now is about 2 percent of our uh, GDP is spent on, uh, on uh, defense expenditure. Now, 2 percent of 4 trillion is very different from, say, 2.5 percent of 1.5 or 1.75 trillion uh, about 10 years back. So, uh, it's, I don't think resources have ever been a constraint, and I'm taking the liberty of similar uh, sort of accommodation by the finance secretary in the future as well. Uh, our expectation is, frankly, that we will meet our whatever uh, are the requirement of our services. We should be able to meet quite easily with a normal uh, increase in our budgetary outlay. In fact, often it is difficult to fully exhaust that uh, budgetary outlay precisely because of the one, the, the hard road that I mentioned, which is indigenization, and also some of the supply chain issues that are afflicting uh, suppliers worldwide also, which means that a lot of your uh, contract fulfillment timelines keep getting stretched. But nonetheless, as I said, even, at, even if we maintain it at 2 percent of our GDP, as we grow at 7 percent, we should be comfortably able to uh, meet the requirements of our uh, armed forces.